Look at Matthew 21. Appreciate uh, the church this morning. Weeks now uh, that we would come in one mind and one accord. The greatest thing we can have on our mind when we come to the house of the Lord is to glorify His precious name. To have a desire that if someone is struggling, we may help them. That we won't put them down, but we may help them to get out of their struggle. And uh, I never want to be guilty of saying, well, they shouldn't be bringing that to the Lord. Uh, if I think they shouldn't be bringing it to the Lord, it's something that maybe that we wouldn't think is what you should bring to the Lord. Now, I'm going to pray for them if they bring the right thing to the Lord. Either way, I'm going to pray. And uh, from my heart, desire is that we learn of the Lord. And uh, so the month of February, I want you to just come to church every Service and have one thing on mind to see someone help, bless, save, comfort, whatever. There's nothing else that's really important. The bills are okay. We got the money to pay for them, so you don't, you know, and uh, the, the church is comfortable. We got carpet, we got pews, and, and we have all of this. And uh, just have one thing on mind that God will bless. So do it in the month of February. That's only a 28 days, and we're already three days into it, so you don't even have to be good. Near as long. Just, you know, just the shortest month. Uh, just one thing in mind. Uh, because how the devil conquers and divides is when we get other things in mind and something becomes more important uh, than the saving grace of Jesus Christ. I want to see people grow and strengthen. I want to see the church uh, to grow and be strengthened. I want to come and be on wonderful. Uh, place to be this morning. Just come to worship the Lord, feel the power of the Holy Spirit. And people come to pray and people come to cast their cares upon Him. And the Bible tells us, cast your cares. What may be a care for you may not be a care for me, but it's a care for you. Therefore, I care. Therefore, also, most of all, He cares. So we appreciate it. Matthew 21, beginning at verse 1. Matthew 21, uh, beginning at verse 1. <coughs> and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethany, Bethany unto the Mount of Olives, then sent two Jesus' two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find the ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. If any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath near them, and straightway he will send them. And this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and setting up on an ass, and a colt the fold of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they sent him their own. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strolled them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And the Jews went into the temple of and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And said so unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief Pharisee, Pharisee seek chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea. 
have you never read out of the mouth of babes and suckling thou had perfected praise? And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. And in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto them, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. You may be seated and live pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your great grace. We thank you, Lord, for saving our soul and making us whole. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. God, we thank you, Lord, for your visitation in the house of the Lord this morning, for the obedience, Lord, of, of those coming, Lord, in one mind and one accord, that we may see victory in Jesus Christ. Lord, there's some here this morning uh, facing difficulties, uh, facing decisions. Uh, uh, God, but we know that we turn, turn ourselves to you. Uh, God, that you'll be with us and you'll lead us and you'll guide us. Uh, and God, you'll be near and you'll give instructions and blessings and help. So God, we ask for those help. There may be some here this morning, Lord, uh, that's struggling. Or maybe there's some that's lost. Uh, or some, God, that has went. Uh, out of the ark of safety. I, Lord, we pray that they may come and give their hearts to you. Lord, they may be renewed that their covenant will be saved. Lord, we pray for all the needs and all the help. So we ask God you anoint physically that we may preach the word of God in the strength of the flesh. But above all, God, we ask you anoint spiritually that we preach thy word in the power of the Spirit. Time together to the loose end, fill the voice we leave because our inability to let thy word go out freely. We love you and we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for all these things. In thy name we pray, dear Jesus, anoint. Amen. Amen. From this we want verse 10 and verse 19. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Then verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And say unto you, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. The whole tree become as a stick. You might as well say you're just completely dead. So why would Jesus do this when you study the Bible? And you look at these saying, what we want to preach on, we must be more than leaves. Must be more than leaves. Now, when we say we're a Christian, we are also saying we're a new creature in Christ Jesus. We are saying all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That doesn't separate. I am a certain kind of Christian. I am another kind of Christian. He said that, that when you are a Christian, behold, all things become new. And the whole things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Amen. So there should be a no difference in your life. Amen. In your life between us and the world, there should be a no difference in our life once we say we're a Christian. Christian. Another difference. Now being a Christian is more than not saying bad words. Amen. Being a Christian is more than that. And if you're a Christian you're saying bad words, don't do it in front of me because sure is rubbing my confidence in you. You say, well, I always say when I get angry. I say, great. You only steal when you're tempted. So it loses my confidence, but I'll pray for you. And I'll love you and I'll try to keep you from doing it. I become a new Christian in Christ Jesus. Now I can describe my anger without cursing God. I told somebody a while back there, somebody has kept on, kept on, and I said, This conversation is over. Amen. That's all I said. And he realized the conversation was over. It was a salesman getting off the push him, off the personal. Amen. So I had simply said, this conversation is over. He said, yes, sir. I didn't have to cuss. I didn't have to use. In fact, I always say, I'll get off of this. I always say, take a lot more intelligence not to use an everyday slang word. If you make your point without cursing, it takes a little more intelligence. I like that. If you get mad at me for saying it, I'll pray for you. So it's more than not saying bad words. 
amen, is more than like joined to bad places. I, I know a lot of people don't say bad words. They don't go to bad places, amen, but being a Christian is much more than that. Being a Christian means you're producing fruit that others see. Yeah, right. Every example in the Bible and our lessons down through January and for the rest of this month, our lesson this year's lesson over in the fellowship building on Friday is about growing and about producing. Every Christian needs to produce fruit. Amen. It's the absolute. It's not only the good. It's not only the talent. It's not only the young. It's not only the old. Every Christian is to produce fruit. Amen. That others see. Amen. You have to be a light unto the world. A city that set up on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. That they may see your good works. And the good works doesn't glorify you, but it glorifies your Father which is in heaven. Uh, amen. I'm not trying to be uh, a boy. I'm not trying to be me. I'm not trying to get everybody uh, uh, to go to work. I'm trying to give you the Bible thing that you have to be a fruit producer. Uh, I want to remind you uh, in our text, he came to the tree. Uh, he saw there was no fruit. Uh, he said there will be no more fruit on this tree uh, forever. He said, well, we'll get to that. When others are describing you, would they say, what would they say about you? You said you're a Christian, <laughs> and your neighbors, or your co workers, or your families. When they're describing you, would they say, she or, she or he goes to church? That's one thing they can say. When you're a Christian, he or she goes to church. Can they say that? Well, they might say, he or she is a great person. Do they say that? He or she goes to church. Well, they might add a little bit. They say, he or she is a great person. Or they might say, I hopefully they say, they're a really dedicated Christian. They love God and they love others. Now, you'll be described as a Christian in one of three ways. They go to church. Or they do, they're a good person. Or they're dedicated to God. I want to be described as someone that's dedicated yeah. unto the service of God. Amen. Yes, I go to church. That's part of it. Yes, I always will be in church. That's part of it. And yes, amen, I want to be a good person. Amen. That's part of it. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. He delighteth in all his way. Don't stand up and say as a person, you're no good. Your righteousness is as filthy rage. As Austin said, it is a filthy rage. But we're talking about the righteousness of God. Right. And we're talking about the steps of a good man. I, I, I remember what Don used to say. If you keep standing up and say, I'm no good, I'm no good, I'm going to say amen. <laughs> and then you get angry. <clears throat> You're supposed to be a good person in the Lord, but also want to be described, and you should have to de a desire to be described. They're dedicated unto yeah. God. Amen. That's where we're all going to. That's where we all need to be. Uh, that we're dedicated on God. It's more than just not saying a bad word. Uh, it's no more uh, than not just a uh, 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 mix with bad people or going to bad places. Uh, it's become a new Christian in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. It's about, it's about being dedicated. It's about loving God and loving others. Uh, in our text verses. Uh, amen. The city was moved. Uh, in verse 10, when we were coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. Some were moved to rejoice. Some wanted Jesus to rebuke those that cry, Hosanna, save us now. If you go to the Luke scripture, Luke 19, huh, and they begin to cry out, and they begin to say, Hosanna, huh, and disciples and all the rejoicing, huh, the Pharisees would say, look, huh, don't allow them to do this. Huh, don't you stop them. Huh. And Jesus said, I'll say unto you, huh, if these cry out, huh, amen, the stones are going to cry out yeah. because this is the only time, this is the only time that will happen. Huh. It won't happen now. Huh. If you all don't cry out, you just simply go stone dead. <laughs> If the church decides something more important than salvation, you go stone dead. If the church decides that uh, the part carpet of here or the seeds uh, or this or that more important than salvation, you go stone dead. Don't think that God won't leave your church. Uh, don't think that God won't leave you. Uh, amen. God loves you and He loves you. But God will, uh, amen, forsake those that forsake Him, the 
Bible is very plain in that. That's right. Asa, you be a God, God will be with you. You forsake him, he forsakes you. Amen. He makes it very clear. Someone of Jesus to rebuke us. Uh, amen. Rebuke these that crying Hosanna. Uh, amen. Uh, as the sun was uh, uh, enjoying the parade, uh, the common people were praising God and some of the other. Uh, but the Pharisees, uh, amen. Uh, the Holy One uh, was coming to the temple. The Holy One. Uh, the One uh, whom there is no guile. Uh, the holiness of the holiness has ever been. Uh, uh, the One in perfection. Uh, the Son of God. Uh, made man grow the mother. He was coming to the holy place in Jerusalem. And he wasn't allowed to be there. How often do churches eliminate the Holy One from coming yeah. in the door? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If in now open, I will come in. I, I will enter with him and sup with him. I, and he with me. How often do we limit the Holy One? Uh, amen. To come in our hearts. Uh, the Holy One wants to be in our hearts. Uh, amen. Uh, wants to be in that new creature. Uh, the Holy One wants to dwell within us. Uh, the Holy One. Uh, by the Holy Ghost in the third part of the Trinity. Uh, the Holy Ghost wants to be with us. Uh, and sometimes we don't allow the Holy Ghost to come. Uh, uh, watching TV is more important uh, than reading the Bible. Huh? Amen. Going here is more important huh, than dedicating to God. Saying this is more important huh, than repenting huh, and praying for someone. Huh? Amen. Anything we put in between huh, anger huh, or malice huh, or pride huh, or hate huh, or anything else huh, that we put in between you and your servant for God limits the Holy One from coming in. That's right. Amen. Amen. I don't want to limit the Holy One. The Holy One was not wanted in the Holy City. Amen. So when Jesus found, he came uh, and he cast them out. Uh, amen. To make his house a house of prayer. Uh, Why their mind was on everything else. Uh, their uh, religion became very convenient. Uh, Hey, uh, you didn't have to uh, bring a sacrifice. Uh, you didn't have to worry about making one traveling to the temple. Uh, you could simply buy one there. Uh, it became merchandise. Uh, they used a temple coinage. Uh, and you had to change your... They made a little profit on the tours. Uh, amen. Uh, but it became a house of merchandise. It was a very busy place. Uh, churches are very busy places nowadays. Uh, we have all kinds of things going on. Uh, except the one main thing. We come to worship God. Uh, and I'm, I'm Seeking that so much, uh, amen, that we're restored uh, uh, to the former day when we worship God. Our minds got corrupted on everything else and we forgot to worship God. That's right. Amen. So you came, he found leaves only. Said, My house is a house of prayer. When we come to church this week, we make a house of prayer. When we come to church this month, we make a house of prayer. Amen. It becomes habit to us. Uh, and the Lord, uh, that's why I put Daniel, I said, if you do that, Daniel, uh, amen, take charge. Uh, we want to pray on every service. Uh, on, on Sunday services, on Wednesday, I know we take prayer requests. But on Sunday morning, Sunday night, you come in tonight, and Daniel, Lord, will, uh, will get up and say, let's get them together in prayer. Uh, amen. We come in one mind and one accord. I really got blessed this week. My daughter-in-law sold the Honda Accord. And I went down to Pikeville and drove it back home all the way home. I didn't see another Accord. And I thought, man, I'd like to go pick up some people and put them in here with me. So we could all be in one Accord. Hey, man, you all want to ride? I still got it. I have it in the house. I ain't gave it to my brother-in-law. He bought it. But I got an Accord. That, anybody know in one Accord with me? Get in the car. I'll come and pick you up today. <laughs> One mind and one accord. So Jesus found leaves only. No fruit. He said there's therefore going to be no fruit that grows on this tree up, yeah. up from henceforth. Amen. Now the, the gist of that and the implication of that and the answer to that is this. Amen. The Jews had had a time. He came to the very temple area. He came to the temple area and he looked for fruit. There was no fruit being produced by the Jews. Amen. They had turned the law into their own self-righteousness. They wanted everything to point to them, not to God. There is no fruit produced. He said there will be no fruit anymore. Uh, amen. The tree withered away. Our uh, salvation was about ready to come. That's right. To all. He came unto his only own receiving not. Don't let your church or your life produce only least. Sometimes in Christian life, the only thing you have, I'm a Christian, and you have least. But there's no fruit. Now everything the Bible says you must produce fruit. 
good seed and good ground has but one option. It produces fruit. Amen. That's the only option there is. Uh, amen. Uh, the fruit, he said, uh, if you don't have fruit, I am the vine, you are the branches. Uh, if you don't have fruit, uh, I'll cut it down. Uh, amen. Uh, and he talks about a vine. He does all this. You produce no fruit. Uh, the poor condition of fruit in John 15. No fruit. Uh, and no fruit, he said, you're cut down. Everything in the Bible uh, says uh, if you have leaves only, uh, you're not going to make it. Uh, amen. Uh, you're not going to make it to heaven uh, because you go to church. As the man said, I, I'm a farmer. I went to the barn every day for the last 60 years. Every day I went to the barn to feed the cattle. He said, every day I've been to the barn. He said, I've never become a cow yet. Amen. You can come to church every day for 60 years. But there's a fruit production has to be. Amen. In our lives. And when we produce fruit, and the church produces fruit, then we see victory in Jesus Christ. But if your life gets in the point where you're not fruit producing, you're living a danger point. He came. This is right before the crucifixion. Right before you go to the cross. The very last days of his life. He said you'll produce fruit. This tree will be produced fruit no more. The Jews had their chance. They had their chance. He's not given them another way of salvation. Right. He gave us what we have now. There's not going to be another plan. He's not going to come up with another plan that the Jews have another plan. He's got the best plan in the world. You simply come and ask and believe and you shall be saved. And in that you get eternal life. And in that you get a peace of passing understanding. In that you get a joy. In that you become the new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. In that you can move mountains with prayer. I'm glad to say that I'm praying for the God. God's helped me. We pray for all different things. There have been and every most people in here is basically us men be on the bike road. We pray that God gets me out of this mud hole <laughs> where I got myself in. I think I'm making. Yeah. I'm away. That's right. I remember in the army, let me off with this a little bit in Vietnam. The last few days there, and they had me. You can kind of bring you back to safety. And I was in a jeep, and I was driving a jeep, and had a lieutenant in there, or a captain. And I was going from one far base bike, and we came across, I mean, an enormous mud hole here at the bike of church. And I stopped, and he said, you think we can get through this? I said, oh, West Virginia whiz goes, this is a puddle. <laughs> I had no idea if that thing would go through there or not. But I biked her up and hit her everything a jeep would do, about 50 or 60 miles per hour. And I was slowing down and spinning, and he looked out the wheel, and I thought, oh, good. I cut the wheel, and I mean, I covered it. <laughs> I've always been entertaining myself. <laughs> Even in war in Vietnam, 19, I was still entertaining myself. I never forgot that picture. I was covered from head to toe. Uh, we made it through. Uh, amen. By the Lord's help. Uh, uh, we made it through. Uh, I, I've asked God to get me up a hill. Uh, amen. Uh, I've asked God to get you up hill. I also have asked God to get me down the hill. Uh, amen. Keep me safe going down the hill. Uh, it's weary going up here. It's sometimes I'd rather try to go up hill than I would down hill in slick roads. <laughs> So I've asked him to help me get me up hill, down hill, <clears throat> across valleys. I've asked him to do a lot in my life. I appreciate him. Amen. Uh, but we must go. Uh, there's a pair of fruit tree we're going to uh, uh, quit very shortly. Uh, in Luke 13, uh, there's a wonderful story about a parable uh, about a tree. Uh, amen. For three years, uh, he and those husband came. Uh, and the Lord of the leader come. Uh, he said, cut it down. Uh, these three years I've come. Uh, I'm searching for fruit, fruit uh, on this. Uh, I cut it down. Uh, amen. Uh, and the, the husband said, look. Uh, the dresser said, look. Uh, let's dig them out. Uh, let's try one more thing. Let's do the battle. Let's do everything we can do to give it all the opportunity. Let me tell you here at River, you have all the opportunity to grow. There is no greater opportunity. God has given you great singers and preachers. Amen. Invite people, tell them, say, hey, come down the river. We got great preachers. And, and God will forgive you even if you don't think so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and say it anyway and ask God to forgive you. That's better than saying, look, come, when you all come down, we don't, we don't ever do anything. But preachers, don't, they preach too long. They're not really very interested in You know, we kind of just sit there. We want to come down. I wouldn't even want to go to church. I've been in church all my life. 
Amen. I, I brag on him. I, I think we do have the best. Oh, I, all the time I say, please, please don't take it for granted. You got two of the best young ministers in the valley, and you have them in the river. You got the best musician and singer. We got it all. My goodness, he couldn't fertilize anymore. He couldn't dig about it anymore. He couldn't make any more opportunity to be a good Christian in Christ Jesus. There is no greater opportunity than you have a reaper, Dr. Tabernacle. They may be some just as good, but you can't have any greater. We depend on God. Please realize. He said, okay. One more year. Yeah. One more year. You do that. Next year, she's cut down. I want to ask a very serious question. If you're not being produced, what year are you in? I've seen too many. I'm not going to argue you as a doctor. I'm just going to talk to you the experience. It's a lot easier. I've seen many used to produce, they quit producing. They quit producing. After a while, they quit coming. Very long. After a while, they quit coming all together. There's no more testimony in their life. Right. There's no more witness in their life. Let me tell you, you're in the hands of the mighty God. Amen. You're in the hands of a merciful God. You're in the hands of the just God. But also you're in the hands of the just. Amen. You're in the hands that will do everything he can to get you saved. You're in the hands of a man that will do everything he can, amen, to dig about you and round about you and give you the blessings of life. But understand, he gives warnings. He gave warnings many times in the Bible. He gave warnings in Jerusalem. Right here in Matthew, a few chapters over, he tells of Jerusalem. They had the most beautiful temple, larger than it ever was. They come. It was so beautiful. They said, Jesus, look at this temple. Look at this. Look, uh, uh, Josephus, a uh, uh, historian at that time uh, that lived in those days, a uh, uh, his, Jewish historian, uh, he said this statement, if you've never seen the temple, you've never seen a beautiful building. Amazing. Jesus didn't say, wow. He didn't say, boy, I'll make sure and preserve this one. <coughs> he didn't say, man, that's impressive. That's right. He didn't say that touches the heart of God. What well, he did say, there's not going to be one stone left upon yeah. another. And what he did say when he came in with Luke 21, he said, because you knew not the time of your visitation. Yeah. Understand, God will dig about you. He'll give you a chance to produce fruit. Let me tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you'll walk away from your church. You'll walk away from your life. Amen. You can go to Jeremiah's scripture. We're not going to spend the whole lesson on trying to prove that. Jeremiah, he left from the holy holy. He went to the door of the threshing. He went to the gate. He went to the hill. He completely withdrew. The Babylonians came in and completely destroyed the temple. God is able. Yeah. Amen. So, I hope we have more than just leaves. I hope Greenland is more than just leaves. I've seen people... And churches sometimes shout, but it's very shallow. I've seen some churches shout, and it's very predominant, I mean, powerful. Some people shout, and it's leaves only. I've seen some Christians in their life, they all they do is produce leaves. We have to produce fruit, let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you. We pray to God that you take the message and outside your heart. We love you. And Lord, let us be more than just a loose producer. Lord, everything in the Bible says we must produce fruit. Lord, we pray for some here that's in the second year, the third year. God is not producing. But understand, Lord, you sent preachers and you sent messengers and you sent singers and you sent Christians. And God, you made a great place to come and assemble together. God, you sent a preacher that preach the truth. We pray, God, that you may realize, hey, I better get with them. The Lord's going to 
Help me down if I don't produce. I'm going to have to produce some fruit. In thy name we ask, dear Jesus. Amen.